Sketchcraft is recorded in front of a live internet audience and supported by listeners like you. Please be sure to leave a review on iTunes, like and share our Facebook page, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. All links can be found at sketchcraft.com. That's sketchcraft, C-R-A-F-T, the name of the podcast, dot com. Remember, every little bit counts and it all helps to grow the show. Thanks. Welcome to Sketchcraft, the podcast for art, games, and process junkies. I'm Rob Duenas, full-time illustrator and graphic artist elsewhere. This is an unedited podcast, which will probably contain strong language, so listener discretion is advised. Sketchcraft, the podcast for art, games, and process junkies. I'm Rob Duenas. Slight pause there. Thinking about changing it back to art, design, and process junkies. Uncertain. But I do like to talk about video games. Nah, I'll keep I like games. So here's the thing. Um, quick update. Uh, you know what? Never mind. Forget that update. I'm going to do a separate cast for that. So I'm going to leave this in here because I don't feel like editing it out. Let's move on. What's today's podcast all about? Well, Rob needs to actually open up his... Evernotes here. Let's get these open. Let's talk about today's cast. To print or not to print. Here's the deal. DC Josh hits me up on Deviant. And if you are unfamiliar with Josh's work, he uh, he does a lot of coloring like for the Transformers comics over at IDW and for Hasbro and stuff. Pretty, pretty talented colorist and a pretty good artist in his own right. Uh, so his name on Deviant is DC Josh. Uh, I'll put a link in the podcast uh, link section or whatever so you can go check his art there cool guy cool guy so dc josh ask josh asks me uh he wants to know what are the rules to selling digital prints or copies of your digital work at comic cons now now when i got this email from him i asked him to kind of clarify it a little bit and so he kind of broke it up into two parts one being the selling of colored art that other people drew. So if you're a colorist, what's this sort of like, you know, rule or sort of unspoken rule to selling to selling art that you yourself didn't draw, which colored and two, uh, selling digital line art, which means sort of regular, regular ink comic pages drawn digitally. So that means, okay, you create, you draw something. So you draw a transformer completely digital, no pencils in a computer. You want to sell copies of that? What are the answers on that? Uh, and then sort of also as well as just selling fan art at cons. So we'll kind of throw that in there too. Uh, so um, it's technically three things, but, but whatever. I mean, so there we go. So this sort of, let's start with the prints parts. Work backwards because I'm a little dyslexic. Selling fan art at comic cons. Now, I'm going to tell you right now before I get into this, the official rule like if you ask a lawyer or you ask marvel or anybody probably 99 percent of the time they're going to tell you you can't do it don't do it do you know you no, do it it's not legal it's copyright infringement whatever okay that's because they technically you always have to be protecting your trademark legally or you stand to lose it in a court of law so they're always going to tell you that but they're just not going to enforce it um except in the last year or two this little thing popped up right and if you are unfamiliar with this then this will be news to you and if you are familiar with it sit back and have fun so basically hold on let me get some coffee so basically the guy who sort of now i don't have the link offhand so i'll try to grab it but the guy who created ghost rider in the 70s apparently had sold the rights to ghost rider to marvel um with the only stipulation being some weird thing about movies or something far as i know and so he took marvel to court to try and get some of the money generated from the last two ghost rider movies paid to him now he lost that suit to marvel um for whatever reason and just to stick it to him marvel countersued for like twenty forty thousand dollars like somewhere between twenty thousand and forty thousand dollars um and part of that was for like twenty seven thousand dollars they figured in having sold prints at conventions now 
this sort of sent a ripple across the comic book community because they're like, oh my god, is Marvel going to start suing people for selling fan art, or or what if they do sketches? You know, um, and the answer is no. Marvel actually responded to this and and said that. Uh, they have no intention of shutting down sketches or prints or cons, as that's part of the convention atmosphere, right? That's part of, like, you go to a convention, you would like to be able to get a drawing of your favorite character by an artist you like or or a copy of their work, you know? Uh, but but what was that? Well, that was basically a fuck you by Marvel to that guy. That That's like, uh, hey, you know, you sued us first, and since you lost, we're going to stick it to you. I mean, like, if they really wanted to get him, I mean, they could have... Could have inflated that from like twenty seven thousand to probably two million if you if you really think about about the way you can throw a book at somebody. It was really just a sort of like loose arbitrary amount to sort of like get back at them and teach people a lesson. And sort of like the uh, you know the the Siegel family who keeps going to court with with Mar with DC or Superman. So um, that's where the fear comes from. But again, Marvel has clarified that I've been to con since. They're not running around. Uh, trying to shut people down. I have seen that once at cons back in the the, the mid '90s, and around up until 1995 or '96, people always sold replica lightsabers at conventions. You can go to any booth at Comic Con in the, the far section where the retailers were, where you get past the you know the, get past the companies and the artists, and you have like just the sh- people selling shit. And they would always be selling replica lightsabers. And then in the mid '90s. Uh, Lucasfilm finally like hooked up with this company called Icons, and Icons made the first official replica lightsabers. And so Icons went around all the cons, you know, looking at all the the the, the sabers that were being made, the, the little like fake replica ones, uh, shutting them down, giving them cease and desist orders, and then finding sort of the people who made the best and offering them jobs. Uh, that's the only instance I've ever seen of this. I'm mean, here personally witnessed it because I was really big into lightsaber replicas at the time, so. Okay, that takes care of where this comes from. Um, as for just selling fan art uh, at cons, so um, hold on, let me let me let me check here for a second. Okay, so as for selling fan art at cons, so basically it's always been allowed. Okay, it's just part of the convention experience since I've been a kid. I've been there's I mean there have been people who who would just go to con and do fan art and sell prints of it. It's promoting. It's a comic convention. It's a festival of comic art. It's not, um, you know, it's not Walmart. You know, we're not we're not taking these prints and putting them into Target and Mervins to sell in mass market. It's going to a convention. And so, and, and, and usually it's, you know, it, it splits in half. Some of it's art you generated from nowhere, straight fan art. And some of it is artists who've, you know, produced work and they're selling copies of it for the the companies. Just make sure my advice to you is put the legal info on there. So, like, somewhere on the bottom, you, know, you can put, you know, copyright, you know, respective owners or something. If you look at any print you've ever bought, you know, most of them have it. Just make sure you kind of put that sort of thing on there just to kind of cover your ass a little bit, including sketchbooks. If you do sketchbooks that happen to have fan art in there, just make sure you have somewhere copyright, you know, respective uh, copyright holders. If you get the Comic-Con booklet, if you go to the San Diego Comic-Con or any major comic convention, they'll usually have like a booklet and you'll see the legal info that they put on when they put in Marvel characters on the covers and stuff. Those those are never run through Marvel getting permission to do it. They just they just do it and put that info on there. Um, if a con doesn't allow you to sell art, now DC, Josh had this mention that he goes to BotCon, right? Now, I'm going to, con- this is conjecture on my part, so I'm not putting words into Josh's mouth or trying to get him in trouble. So I'm just going to assume, right, in this conversation that it's the worst case scenario, right? So the worst case scenario is that you go to BotCon or BotCon invites you and they tell they tell you that you are not allowed to sell prints of Transformers or G.I. Joe or whatever else, uh, Transformers is BotCon. So you're not allowed to sell Transformers prints at BotCon. Okay, so here's what I would say to that. One, uh, ban it. Two, protest it. Like, literally hit to hit to Deviant, tell people, hey, look, they're, they're not allowing fan art, you know, it's, you just throw them under the bus. I would then do a Kickstarter to uh, raise funds to make a print, right, and hand out that, 
I would then I would go to the Biocon and I would stand outside protesting it, and I would hand out the print for free to anyone who wanted one, uh, and I would label it banned from Biocon. See, because here's here's my my reasoning for this: as artists, we take very little pay on these jobs. I mean, it used to be like for the most part, you could get a pretty good rate of 150 to 250 dollars a page, and now it's it's really more like between 60 and 100 a page. Uh, usually in the 20 and 40s if you're on the lower paying companies. And being able to sell uh, fans our art directly has always been part of the ecosphere of conventions. So if a particular company wants to sort of fight that ecosphere and that tradition, then we should call them out and shun them. Uh, just because you put on a convention you know, as Hasbro, as Hasbro or any other major company, I don't care if it's Mattel or say it was Warner Brothers, and you're sort of hosting your own convention, and then likewise you're saying that you can't sell copies of the stuff there. Well, hey, great, but I also in turn have the right to expose that as just I have the right to disagree with that, and 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 expose them for being I don't want to say corporate, but that's the that's the very antithesis of a, of a fan driven initiative. And I guess it would be a fan driven initiative. It would be. Um, a company-driven initiative, although I have a feeling Hasbro is not directly paying for BotCon like Blizzard does for BlizzCon. Probably sponsoring in some way, and it's made up of a collection of, of fans. I don't know. Um, but here's the thing, right? And here's a dirty little insider secret I can give you all that I'm I'm personally aware of, right? Is they steal your ideas off DeviantArt all the time. Uh, whole reference packages for, for whether it's, in my case, T-shirts, right, or any other product are made uh, usually entirely of fan art. And I personally fought this. And I've tried to get fan artists paid for the work. Uh, and I have, I was only successful once uh, at a company in 2007, a t-shirt company. And since then, no other t-shirt company would do it. We had licenses for Office and Monty Python and stuff. So I went on to DeviantArt and I found people who were making fan art because uh, a lot of my fellow artists at that company quit. So I was kind of left with myself and two interns in a way. So I went to DeviantArt and said, okay, these people did fan art. I hit them up and said, hey, since you did this, how would you like 150 bucks and a free T-shirt? And you get to have an official whatever. And, and that, that seemed to go pretty well. One guy in particular that I actually hit up to draw something off it, I won a DeviantArt uh, daily, a daily deviation for his, his piece. I, I gave him this reference. It was going to be like a grip of every Office character you can imagine. Uh, so if you type in the Office, I'm sure it'll pop up somewhere. And he drew them all. I gave him all the characters in the reference, and it was great, sort of, be able to to promote and and pay fan artists for the work. But uh, these companies feel they have a right to steal your art because you drew fan art. So I don't feel too sorry for these companies. Uh, as or do I feel like we're infringing on their copyright? Seeing as how, from my point of view, we're promoting their characters and their properties for free. These companies spend tens of thousands of dollars on bullshit websites or web banners to promote their work and then we go and draw one picture and, and it'll get like a million views between nine gag and deviantart and everywhere else and that just helps promote their stuff and they end up on all the sketch with the slash film.com blogs here's this nifty avengers t-shirt here's this whatever and it's all fan art and this helps promote their work uh, and keep it relevant without that relevant fan base then you you lose the 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 sort of pop culture integrity or the pop culture um, importance that 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 property might have so uh, every comic book artist that i know of grew up drawing the characters that they loved and if these conventions or companies decide to take that away from us then in my opinion we have the right to stop working for them uh or buying their goods so let me move on to selling colored artwork so if you're a colorist and you're trying to sell the art that you colored and you didn't draw it, uh, then I would say that's okay. As an artist, there are people who have colored my art, uh, specifically Diego is the only cat that I know that's actually colored my art. Um, and I sell copies of the stuff that he colored all the time. I just give him credit. His name's Diego on there. And people ask me who the colorist. I say Diego Rodriguez. And I've always printed up business cards of his and I hand them out. I've never seen an artist do that, but... Uh, anytime they want to know the colorist, I hand them that, and, and I always try to promote his stuff. So um, if these people want to hand you their business card, great. Otherwise, you know, just just label it. Uh, as for how I would lay that out, my advice would be to provide two portfolios at your table, one labeled colored art, so art that you colored, and the other uh, illustrated art, art that you drew. I've seen artists like Nia and other people do that, and it seems to work pretty well for them. Uh Artists selling prints of their work that they did not color uh, 
including me, have always done that. So it's not a big deal. So I believe colors have the right to do so inversely as well. And then lastly, selling copies of digital line art. Uh, that's okay too. You know, people buy copies of my line art, uh, digital or not all the time. I do sketches, like little sketches, and I'll print big boards out, and people love that. I mean, they're really hella rough, um, so it's not really a big deal. Uh, and now, let's say you draw a whole comic book digitally, and you're like, well, you know, what do I do about selling originals because you don't have any? Well, I, I, I have a way around that is that um, is that the art you make is – see, here's another thing, right? is that uh, the art that you make is real, whether it's digital or traditional. It's not pretend or imaginary art. So if you want a physical copy, uh, then you'll have to redraw it. Picasso and artists you know, in the past have made multiple copies of their paintings that they were famous to earn a living. They just numbered them. At the bottom, it would say like 20 out of 100, so forth and so forth. There's always this sort of weird stigma with artists that says that if you reproduce something, it's wrong. So, like, if you draw a whole comic digitally and then you take those digital things, you print them out and you trace back over it and you have a physical copy so you could sell those, that somehow that's wrong. You're tracing art and you're cheating. Well, well, here's the thing, right? See, musicians, to sort of make an analogy, musicians, they play the same songs at concerts over and over again. You know, Michael Jackson came up with Thriller. He played it about a billion fucking times and made money off it every single time. Chefs if you are made famous by their recipes. They make a great ass fucking lasagna. They make it over and over and over and over. Sell recipe books over and over, over and over again. But so, but so help me God, if I as an artist show anything that even looks remotely familiar to something that I or anybody else in the in the fucking universe have ever drawn, then I'm fucked. I mean, I'm hosed. People go, oh, you stole that, or it looks just like this guy. You don't have a right to. See, you know, well, in my opinion, then you can just F those people because those those are the true haters. And I really feel that if you want me to if you want to hear more elaboration on the subject, you should check out my last podcast. Where I talked about eight things about artists that that, that I hate and specifically the section uh, weird rules on art, because this falls under that sort of category where it's like, oh, you know, if I drew a cover digitally, I don't have a right to have a pencil copy. Well, you know, the reason why I drew it digitally was because it was faster for me to sort of like work it out now and I didn't have an inker so it's better to just work it all on the computer for me and then I make a pencil copy and I have one uh I don't, I don't make too many I only make one so technically I have to technically I have to draw it twice to see a uh, return on physical art so you know, that's up to you you can check out, check out how you want to do it but if you just want to sell copies of your stuff just sell copies just let them know it's a print it's not the real art it's not a big deal I've never had an issue people love to get prints all the time so, um, and, and if you feel it's a weird situation to talk to people about, then just don't let them know you drew it digitally. Just print out a copy, do the pencils, and just say, oh, yeah, those are my pencils, and I inked it digitally. People, you know, honestly, as artists, we're sort of like magicians, and the more we explain our process to the uninitiated, the, uh, the more room we have to sort of, like, to, to pick fights we don't want, you know, in a way. Like, like, the average person probably shouldn't know how you did it. You know, I love showing my process, but at the same time, I also understand that sometimes that gets me into trouble because, you know, some little bullshit hater out there will be like, oh, well, he did it this way. He really isn't a real artist and you should do it that way. So, um, you know, that's all I got to say about that. So let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up so we can move on. Uh, yes, you can sell fan art. If you get a cease and desist from a company, then stop. Stop producing it. Move on. Pick something else. And maybe come back to it six months or a year later. Uh, if they continue, then stop buying their products altogether and throw them under a bus verbally any chance you can get, whether you're on a panel or a podcast or or in your little journals or whatever. Just throw them under, just just call them out for being their anti fans. They don't want people to promote their work. Fuck them. Uh, if you work for these companies, if you work at like a Hasbro or something, and they won't actually let you sell copies of the work that you made for them, like I'm not talking whole issues, I'm talking about prints of your covers, then my advice to you is to find their direct competitor and go work for them instead. Um, I'm not just making this up. I have done this. I work for a company called Logotel from 2006 to 2008. And... Uh, they came up with these, they would buy all these t-shirts from another company called ODM and tell me to steal it all the time. And I had a problem with that. I said, I, I don't think I should steal those shirts. I get what they're doing in the style and the field they're going for. Let's make original stuff. They wanted me to just steal their work. And I had a problem with that. I'm not going to steal their work. 
And uh, so what I did is I went to ODM and I let them know what Logotel was up to. And I figured since, look, if they, they consider you the best in the business and I would like to work with the best in the business rather than just stealing from you. And I got hired immediately on the spot. So, um, you know, it's not a one-to-one, but the money, I do believe putting your, your the money where your mouth is or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then, yes, it, you know, he, I think finally Josh asked me, you know, about is it just a problem working with fan stuff? Should you just come with the original stuff? And my, my final answer to that is, yeah, it's always best to come up with your own original at works. Uh, but using fan art to bring people to your table is okay. And I, I recommend if you have to. I mean, it's hard to get people to, like, just go, oh, wow, what's your universe about? And it's easier when they say, oh, wow, oh, what's that spawn piece all about? Um, what you could do is, if you wanted to get around it, is that you could charge for your original stuff say look oh, it's 20 bucks for the print but you get a free transformers print and label the transformers print like uh botcon 2013 or some shit right so you're paying for this you're getting that for free um or you can even draw your original characters in like sort of like cosplay outfits like dave sim always drew cerebus as spider-man so there'd be like cerebus and spider-man costume when people wanted him to draw spider-man as a way to sort of co-produce or co-promote your own stuff so that's all i gotta say about it. if anybody has any questions please email me at rob at sketchcraft that's the name of the podcast c-r-a-f-t dot com and josh if you have anything else to follow up please let me know i'll follow up in a previous cast please uh again everybody thank you for your support i got some other stuff i'm gonna be hitting up really really soon been very very busy i will see you all extremely shortly extremely shortly you'd, you'd be so surprised how quickly it's gonna happen y'all take care later bye